Good morning all, it's Post Bag. And the first one has an incredibly detailed description. 10 pieces, block terminal, wire connectors, 2 edge, 5.08 millimeters, I presume, 2p, 3p, 4p, 6p, right angle. Hmm. So I know what this is, but is it going to be any use? Let's unwrap it. Oh, these are all four poles. I thought this was an assortment of different sizes. Well, actually, four pole is what I was after. Um, so these are right angle connectors. No, it doesn't go like that, does it? That must go in there like that. Are they kind of double right angle? That's weird. So that sits right angle on a PCB, and that is right angle. Oh no, that's not right angle, is it? Because the screws are at a right angle. But where you put the wires in is in line with the connectors. That might work quite well, actually. I'll show you what I wanted these for. So outside, uh, I've got one of these. It's uh, fairly obviously a PIR switch, 12 volts, 24 volts, with 8 amp switching ability. And this has uh, not a relay in it, it has a MOSFET, and I thought that would be more reliable from the point of view of, um, well, if moisture gets in, it's going to be less likely to fail than a relay. But actually the weak point is probably this connector. Now, this seems to fit quite well in there. Yeah, so that I think is identical to the uh, connector that came with this. And the one outside is all corroded. So let's go and have a look at it. So here it is, just outside my workshop window. And it's the PIR switch mounted on a little bit of uh, board. Now the sun's come out just to spoil my shot. Uh, there's a connector that uh, runs up to this uh, 10 watt LED light. You can see, I think you can see, that the connector is a little bit um, sort of corroded. These screws on the front are very corroded, but I'll just take that front face off for the moment. So inside it all looks pretty good. Um, there's the PIR board with the chip, which is a BIS001 or whatever it's called. Uh, there's the switching board, which has the two MOSFETs, which I believe are just in parallel, which is how it gets the 8 amp rating. But the connector is fairly exposed on the outside, and that's why it's uh, corroding. Uh, in fact, it all seems to be reasonably weatherproof there. There is a, a seal or a, a place for a seal, but it's not fitted. And there are gaps in it, which you can see there on the back plate. And these four screws that hold the front on, despite the faces being very rusty, the threads themselves aren't rusty, so they're fine. And so those connectors are really just to replace uh, what's on here. I'll certainly uh, replace the external part. I might even replace the internal uh, connector, that means resoldering a new one onto the board, but it looks like I've bought exactly the right thing. Good. Now I'm pretty sure this all works at the moment, uh, but every now and again the wife comes in and says, oh the outside light's not working, and I just have to uh, waggle this connector and uh, make a, a new connection, and then, it, uh, and then it's alright again. But if I replace the connectors, that'll give it a new lease of life. So here they are on eBay, uh, 10 pieces, block terminal, wire connectors, two edge and all that stuff. Now it seems you have to select uh, the number of connectors you want and I selected four way, I'd forgotten I'd done that. Uh, these are $3.98 for 10, that's going to go up to $4.19 fairly soon, free shipping and they came from eGoTo. Okay next up we have this and I have absolutely no idea what this is, I can't find any references to it at all. So let's have a look. Oh, this is going to take hours. Oh no, it's like past the parcel. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, I think it's, well it is, an OLED display. And I'm pretty sure this is full colour. Let's have a look. Hmm, let's get closer in. Uh, well, on the back it says uh, 0.95 inch, 
96 by, well, it looks like 640, but it's 64 OLED version 2.0. Pretty certain this is full color. Uh, ground VCC, SCL and SDA, that looks like I squared C. Reset, but we've also got DC and CS, so it could be an SPI, or it could be a sort of both variants, and you have to select it somewhere. I can't see any selector pads. I think I'm going to have to look at the eBay listing on this. Yes, yeah, so here it is. It's a 65K color OLED display, 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Uh, Serial SPI, so this does look like an SPI version. Um, SCL and SDA will just be clock and data SPI style. Uh, small LCM, liquid crystal module, because it's not a liquid crystal module for Arduino, etc. Uh, 1169 free shipping, and this came from Ayanhu81. Now, I noticed recently that uh, Ollie Kraus on GitHub, as well as having the UHG lib, which is now called the Arduino Monochrome Graphics Library, has the UCG lib, which is called the Arduino True Color Library for TFTs and OLEDs. So it looks like he's separated out uh, the monochrome displays from the color displays. And so I'm likely to find uh, a library for this device or I'm likely to find that the UCG lib, I don't know this, but uh, this is what I'm assuming, this will be the one I need to use to start experimenting with this color OLED. Now the eBay listing says it uses an SSD 1331. In the UCG lib readme, it says it supports the SSD 1351. So it doesn't specifically mention the 1331 here, of course, it's possible that the eBay listing is wrong. This needs uh, to be looked at in a bit more detail, I think. But uh, yeah, this thing does look quite nice, doesn't it? I think I'm going to have some fun playing with this and getting multicolored displays. And I'm sure in uh, the UCG lib library, there'll be lots of color whizzy patterns that you can put on this thing um, and a reasonable price. So yeah, I like the look of this. Okay, next up is this. It's an inverter and I'm already pretty scared. I really don't like these things. This is a high voltage inverter. Where is it? In a bag. Now I wouldn't normally buy this sort of thing because they scare the heck out of me. Three to six volts input 400 kilovolts output, what, half a million volts? That's completely mad. Now you see these things on eBay and they often have a little um, video or something where some bloke's just holding the output wires like that and there's half a million volts spark running across the output wires. Well, I certainly won't be doing that. I mean, I'm almost tempted not to power this thing up at all, I will, but uh, oh, I don't like these things. They're just scary. So this is a DC three volt to six volt input. Now that means it covers the 3.7 volt range of a single cell LiPo. So I'm gonna stick 3.7 volts onto the input of this thing. I'm not gonna do it indoors. I don't wanna set my house on fire. Um, to 400 kilovolts, half a million volts. Do you seriously think this thing's gonna put out Half a million volts. I mean, I, there's no way I can measure it, of course. But 400,000 volts. I don't know. Boost, step up, power module, high voltage generator. Really quite cheap. $3. Free shipping. Where did this come from? Home Garden 365. Now, I'm only going to power this thing up once and then I'm going to cut it open because my eventual aim is to repurpose this thing. If you watch my recent video on transferring charge between um, one cell of a lithium battery pack and the entire pack. What I wanted was a step up generator, which took 3.7 volts on the input, which this does, and put out about, I don't know, 20 or 30 volts. Not half a million volts, but if the secondary is wound outside of the primary on this thing, then I could use the AC switching generator 
circuit part of it and rewind the transformer and get a sensible voltage out, not half a million volts. But for the moment, I'm just going to solder a connector on there. Well, I was going to solder one of these um, 2.1 millimeter connectors on there, but actually there's not much point. I might as well just screw this on there temporarily uh, so that I can give this 3.7 volts from one of my power banks. There'll be plenty of current that way. So I'll just screw that uh, terminal on now. Now, I don't really understand um, ultra high voltages, so I'm not really sure what to do with this spark gap. because I've kind of just bent these into a gap. Uh, it's about 5 mil at the narrowest, 6 mil maybe, 10 mil at the widest. I think I will do this indoors. I'll just put that there. I've got some blue tack on there so it doesn't slide around. And then I've got a reasonably long cable and I'm going to plug that into this power bank. Now even when this is not switched on, this should put out 3.7 volts on this connector. So when I plug that in, this thing should come on. And I'm really scared. I know I'm a total wuss, but I'm moving back well out of the way of this thing. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus. That's evil. Should we try it again? That is just nasty. I have no idea whether there's a capacitor on the output of this thing. So <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere near it for hours. Oh God, these things give me the creeps. Right, I think I should be fairly safe with this knife because there's not much blade and I'm well down the end of the plastic here. So I'm just going to see if there's any residual charge in this thing. No, there doesn't appear to be. No, that seems to be discharged. So I think I'm safe to move this off my bench. Oh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if that thing was half a million volts. It was evil. Anyway, now on to something uh, quite pleasant and nice, I hope. What do we have here? I'll unwrap it. And uh, this is a very nice, pleasant uh, kit, evidently a car. Uh, it comes with a very low voltage motor. I'm not going to put half a million volts through this uh, with a couple of connections and a sort of cheap syringy type thing. And in here, there's a little um, fabric woven separator. I'm not quite sure what it's made of. And a couple of metallic objects, I think. One looks like it might possibly be zinc and the other one's black. Let's have a look at those in closer detail. So yes, we've got two metallic um, pieces here, which look like they might be zinc. And this looks like it's uh, carbon impregnated. It's sort of jet black. And these are two, I can't quite work out what these are, whether they're that material they make um, floppy disk cases out of, I don't know. Or, I mean, it feels like fiberglass, but I'm not sure it is. Now there is a full set of instructions here, uh, but they're all in Chinese. Let's just bring the camera out. So what this is, is a little kit, a little toy car that runs on salt, sodium chloride. And that reacts with the, um, the anode and cathode, or whatever you might call these, the uh, electrodes, to produce a small uh, voltage. It can't be much because there's only three electrodes. Now why would there only be one of those and two of those? So it's not two cells, it must be just a single cell. So this must run off something very tiny like half a volt or one volt maybe. So this is the new salt water fuel cell. Yes, I suppose it is a fuel cell. Uh, powered car, science set, build it yourself kit. And this was just $2.29, which is really good value, I think, for such a fun kit. That's going to keep me amused for an hour, probably. Free shipping, and that comes from Honey Store 2011. Now, it seems that you build the fuel cell inside this little molded plastic piece here, uh, because we've got some instructions here. I can't read them, but I can see what's going on. And there are also some diagrams here about these things looking very corroded. So I wonder whether they've supplied two of these metallic parts 
because essentially the metal just gets eaten away and uh, you get another one to have a second go at this thing. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what gets eaten away. I mean, essentially this is a metal powered car because I assume that the metal just gets consumed in the chemical reaction with salt water. Um, whether or not that occurs uh, constantly without a load on the fuel cell or whether it only happens if the, uh, the motor is drawing a current, I don't know. It'd be fascinating to find out. And for a couple of dollars, well worth it, I think. And so these are today's post bag items. Actually, you'll notice that I didn't put that OLED very close to that spark gap because, uh, well, could take this thing out, couldn't it? Cheerio.